Okay, so we'll make a start. So welcome everybody to this evening's webinar. Uh, as you can see there, uh, this is called Getting Started. And it's the first of a series of eight webinars that I run. And, and they're all recorded. So uh, as I'll explain at the end, uh, although today we're talking about getting started, and I run them once a week typically. I don't, I don't make every week, so sometimes it's probably maybe nine weeks to do the whole series of eight, but usually once a week uh, on a Wednesday this time. Um, but if there's one that you're particularly interested in that's not coming up for three, four, five weeks, something like that, then feel free to go and watch the recordings, and I will show you um, at the end of this training where all of the recordings are held. So, for example, if you're really interested on personal development, you don't have to wait another eight weeks to, to get back to that. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about getting started straight away. And when you first join Clean Easy, you might think there's an awful lot to learn, but it's far, far better to learn while by taking action than to try and kind of spend a week and a half watching everything, reading everything before you open your boxes of catalogs. Uh, I'm going to talk about the 30-day bonus. Um, and then basically, specifically on the catalogue side, a bit about preparing them, planning what you're going to do with the catalogues, delivering and collecting them, and then placing your first order, receiving the goods, and then delivering those orders. I am going to talk about Facebook a little bit, but I'm not going to go into it in a lot of detail, and, and kind of I'll expand on that why in a moment. So, um, the best way to get started is to really get started straight away. So, you know, if you've got your catalogues or even before you've got your catalogues with the Facebook training, you can start earning money straight away. And it's much better to learn <coughs> now how to get started and then learn how to do it better. As we said there, ignorance on fire is much better than knowledge on ice. So, what sort of things can you do when you get started straight away? So, first off, telling your friends and family you've started. That does a couple of things. One is, you might find you know, a team member straight away, somebody else who says, oh, you know what, I'd be interested in doing that as well. And they could join your team. So, you can have a team member you know, within your first few days by just telling people that you already know and trust. Um, but also, even if they're not interested in earning a bit of extra money themselves, they might be happy to order from you and help you get a good start. So it's really important to kind of tell the people that you know. Um, okay, I mentioned a little bit about Facebook at the beginning. Um, Andy Boswell and a few other people have done a lot of work on preparing some fantastic resources on how to sell Clean Easy products on Facebook. Um, there are four, I think five now, short videos on that website. If you haven't been there yet, make sure you go and have a look at that because that's really really valuable stuff there and you don't need to reinvent the wheel and work out how to do it yourself it's all described there and there are some fantastic support groups on Facebook as well so that's really kind of covered in all of there I'm not going to try and play the videos to you now and um, so if you haven't yet done that that's what I would suggest would be your next step and um, I mentioned the online groups there there's, there's one there called clean easy online sales I think it's tips and hints, or might be hints and tips. Um, but if you find that, join the group. Um, there's so much useful information there that it's, uh, it would really help you get a great start. So you can do that in your first couple of days, even before your catalogues arrive. But when they do arrive, excuse me a moment, then there's a few things to do. So firstly, um, you need to prepare them, get them ready for uh, delivering. And ideally, I would say if you've got some friends and family local to you, then get catalogues to them straight away. Obviously, if they're kind of close but not on your doorstep and you're not going to them, see them in the next day or two, you could wait a few days. But especially you know, local friends at work or family nearby, then get your catalogues to them as soon as possible. Show them what you've got. So a quick question, especially for new starters, is there anybody who... Um, I'm guessing most of you have got your receive, received your catalogues, but if, is there anybody who hasn't yet received their catalogues, who's just started in the last couple of days? Okay, uh, there's a, a big silence there, so I'm guessing everybody's got their catalogues, which is brilliant. Okay, so 
In order to help you get a great start, you need to do something called the 30 day bonus. Um, and the 30 day bonus is basically a way to replace lots of catalogues that you might lose. When you're first starting off, your first 30 days, you're delivering your catalogues pretty much to new houses every time. And you will lose some. Everybody loses catalogues in their first 30 days, um, particularly. You lose a few beyond that, but especially in the first 30 days where every, every house is a new house. So the 30 day bonus is a great way to help you do that. And basically what you do is you aim to get £150 worth of orders in, as many as you can, within those first 30 days. So a quick question for people who have just started, I suppose, or everybody, those, who, those of you who have been in the business for, for a little while, would you say it's hard or easy to get £600 worth of orders in your first 30 days? Okay, Amanda says it's easy, Abu because found it hard, Michaela's finding it hard, Gillian says it's easy, Sean says working hard makes it easy, yeah, Myrna says easy, okay. So a bit of a mix there, actually. Uh, yeah, Katrina said she found it easy. Um, to be honest, it's a bit of both, because it all depends on, um, on your situation. But the beauty of it is you can influence it. It's not just a case of saying, well, if it happens, it happens, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. Obviously, the more catalogues you can deliver, and especially if you can use Facebook as well, then the bigger a chance you've got of hitting that. So... Just to give you a rough idea, to get £600 worth of orders in your first 30 days, let, let's call it four weeks, you need around about £150 a week in orders. So, if you start off with 250 catalogues, which is the most popular starter pack, then if you deliver those once a week, that's probably going to take you 8 to 10 hours. On average, you earn around about a pound per catalogue. Now, it's an average, and, and a lot of people start off below that and, and then kind of gradually build it up. But kind of 50p to a pound per catalogue is a good average. Um, and if you top that up with Facebook orders as well, then you should be able to see 250 catalogues, about a pound per catalogue. It's not unusual for people to get 100, 150, 200 pounds worth of orders from their first lot of catalogues. And as I said, if you top that up with Facebook orders as well by working hard on that, then £150 a week is certainly achievable. And the result of that, and that, that's what's important really, it's not the work that you're putting in, but the results are that you get your first income, you'll, get, you'll be earning, if you're putting in £600 worth of orders, you're, you'll earn £125 from that. Now that might not seem a lot, but that will pay off the cost of you getting started, and at the end of that first 30 days, you will know you've got a business that works, you're in profit already, and you've already found your first customers. And plus, on top of that, you would get, if you put in four orders of £150 a week, each of those orders, you'll get an extra 50 catalogues for free. And then when you hit your bonus, that's the £600 worth of the 500 bonus points, you get an extra 50 catalogues on top of that. So 250 full catalogue sets in your first month. So a lot of people find that they've got more catalogues at the end of the first month than they started off with. So that's a great target to aim for. Um, so how do you get your catalogues ready? Um, the first thing to do is to personalise them. So you, you need um, to deliver the Clean Easy Catalogs to your customers prepared with a day slip at the front so people know who you are and, and that you're local with your telephone number on. Um, and they know what day you're going to come back and collect it. Um, and I recommend that you make every pack exactly the same so that you can tell um, who's, um, who's looked at it and who hasn't. Because when you get the catalogue back out, you can normally tell if they haven't even looked at the catalogue. Um, but you can also tell quite easily if you put it in upside down or whatever. If people have taken them all out, put them back in again, you can tell that they've, um, that they've looked at the catalogue. So... And that's useful information as you're going on over the next few days and weeks, starting to build up a pattern of who's not even looking at the catalogue, who's ordering from you, and who's looking at it but maybe hasn't ordered yet. Because this is how it, what helps you to decide uh, which houses you're going to continue delivering your catalogues to. So, um, put the day slip on the front. I recommend that you leave it for two days. I know some groups are slightly different, and obviously over the weekend it might be slightly different. So check with your sponsor, your upline, to see what guidance they give you. 
but I normally do a couple of days. Um, and the order form, it, there's a couple of different uh, viewpoints on this. Make sure, obviously, that you've got an order form in there. Um, some people make sure that the order form is visible. So if the customer puts the catalogue out without uh, looking at it and taking it all around, you can immediately see that they haven't ordered from you, so you can kind of pick that up quite quickly. If you put the if you took the order form away, then the advantage of doing that is that both lots of catalogues, if you've got one at the front, one at the back, they're immediately visible to the customers. They're not hidden by the order form. But when you're going back collecting them, it takes you a little bit longer because you have to check the order form each time to see whether you've uh, you've got an order or not. And the plastic bags that your orders your catalogues come in. Make sure you change them regularly because once you've used them a few times, if they've been out, especially if it's been raining, they do get a bit tatty and you want your, your catalogues to look as immaculate as possible. It's, it's a bit like your shop window. If you had a shop, you wouldn't have the, the shop window all dirty. Right. Planning. Planning is really, really important. When you... Um, go for a job and you're um, an employee then typically you turn up your boss says okay sit there this is your job this is what you need to do come in at nine o'clock you're allowed to go home at five o'clock it's kind of pretty much explained in detail what you need to do when you're self-employed you can choose yourself what to do there's obviously guidance from webinars and from your sponsor and the training and so on but it's up to you to um, choose the hours that you can and so you can fit it around your other commitments however you do need to make a plan as I was saying earlier if you're aiming to get 250 catalogues out and that's going to take you 8 to 10 hours let's say then you need to work out when are you going to put those 8 to 10 hours in it's no good saying oh well I'm sure I'll find some time to do it and by the time it comes to the weekend you're sort of thinking oh well I haven't got my catalogues out and I think we're going away at the weekend so maybe I'll do it next week instead if you don't have those disciplines um, that are kind of enforced on you when you're an employee, then it's really difficult to be successful if you just kind of do it on a day-by-day -day basis. So it's a really good idea to have a weekly planner. And with that planner, um, you can kind of work out, you know, based on how many catalogues you want to put out, how much you're looking to earn, um, and fit around your other commitments, when you're going to put the catalogues out, when you're going to pick them up, when you're going to collect your stragglers and so on. And then stick to it. Don't think, oh, how do I feel today? Shall I do it? And the weather's not too good. You know, if, if the weather wasn't too good and you didn't turn up to work, you wouldn't last there very long. And to be honest, it's the same in Clean Easy. If the weather's not too good and you don't bother to put your catalogues out, you're not going to be earning money from those catalogues. So you do need to be disciplined. You've got more flexibility, but you, you need to be kind of disciplined in, in kind of applying that flexibility. Um, we use what's called a 6x4 routine in determining how often to deliver the catalogue. So um, what we mean by 6x4 is you deliver a catalogue back to the same houses every four weeks. So about once a month, um, you know, sometimes it might be four weeks, sometimes it might be five weeks, but if you aim for four weeks, so every time you're putting your catalogues out, you will go to new houses, and then um, by keeping good records, keep a track of when you... And deliver the orders, the, the catalogues the first time, four weeks later, go back to them. And this is really important because you're showing your customers that you're reliable, they're getting to recognize the catalog, and they're getting to recognize your name. And when they're familiar with, the, with you, they're much more likely to order from you and feel confident in ordering from you because they can see that you're going to be reliable. Um, however, because it might take some people more time to be feel confident in ordering from you, and also some people might be busy at the time that you drop the catalogue in. You need to give them a few chances to order. And what I recommend is you go back to the same houses, even if they don't order from you, six times. So that can take you six months to go back over and over the same houses. Each time you go back, you'll be getting orders from people that didn't order the first time or the second time. And this is really important because you want to build up your customers as close as possible to where you live. If you go around, say, after a couple of times and say, oh, well, I've got all my customers from there. I'm not going to get any more. So two months later, you move on to another area and then another area and another area. You might find the same number of customers, but you might be covering kind of 10 miles. And the cost in time and petrol will mount up over time. So by doing it as close as possible to where you live and giving them every possible chance to order, you're 
kind of extracting all of your customers from your own area. And as I said there, you're showing them that you're going to be regular, you're going to deliver to them regularly, and that you're reliable, and people will order from you when they see that. Okay, when you're delivering your catalogues, it's worth planning your route. Don't just go out and sort of think, oh, I'm not sure where I'm going to go. Um, start close to home. There's really no point in driving right over the other side of town to deliver a few catalogues. If you don't deliver catalogues to your neighbours, somebody else will. So deliver close to home because people, when they see your address and they see that you're local, that gives them more confidence to order from you again. And don't sit about. I think a really good thing to do is just print a map and then just highlight each road as you're going round. So I've done that road right tomorrow, so I'm going to go up there. And you'd be amazed as you start going round, you'll discover lots of little cul de sacs and closures and things that you weren't aware of. And the other thing that's really important is to deliver to every house that you're going to. Sometimes you might look at a house and think, oh gosh, that looks a great big house with big gates. So they probably wouldn't want to order from us. And you'll get huge orders from them. I've got a customer in a, a, um, a council estate. Um, and to be honest, I remember the first time I went around there, there was like an old washing machine in the garden, a couple of bicycles that looked like they'd been there for like years. And I thought, I don't think I'm ever going to see this catalogue again. But I put it through and she orders from me every single month when I go around there. So don't prejudge. Let your customers decide whether they want to order from you or not. And do deliver to houses that have these signs on. You'll see signs that lots of them as you're going around saying no cold callers or no junk mail. Um, so firstly, you're not cold calling. You're delivering a catalogue to allow them to have a look. If they decide they don't want it, they can just put it out. They can put a little note on saying, not, not for me, thank you. Um, and I find, I would say probably two-thirds of my best customers have these signs on their doors. They don't want somebody knocking on the door saying, excuse me, madam, have you got 27 minutes for me to try and sell you some electricity? But they do love getting the catalogue regularly, and they know you. They get to know you, and they, they become so much more confident in ordering from you once they know you. So do deliver to all those houses. The customers will tell you if they don't want their catalogue. The only area that I would say is, is a little bit tricky when you're first starting off especially is if you've got blocks of flats where instead of the flats each having their own letterbox once you go inside, there's like 10 letterboxes all in a box outside. Initially, you sort of think, ah, oh, this is brilliant. I can get 10, 10 catalogues delivered there and it's taken me 20 seconds. The downside is when you then come back to collect them, you might see a pile of, say, five catalogues underneath that, but you've no idea which ones have given you the catalogue back and which ones haven't. So you can be annoying lots of people, buzzing on all the buzzers, trying, buzzers, trying to work out whether they've delivered from you or not. Now, you can get around it by putting a, like, a little sticky label on, on the, the catalogue or making a little mark somewhere so you know which is flat number one, flat number two, and so on. So be aware of that. But don't just kind of sort of think, oh, brilliant, you know, I've got, I'll just go around all the blocks of flats, stick them all in the letter boxes, and it'll be easy. Okay, you will come across other distributors. There's, there's no doubt about it. Clean Easy have been delivering catalogues for 25, 30 years. Clean Easy distributors have. And we have distributors all over the country. But if you come across one, I know when I first started, my sponsor, Sue Marshall, had been in the business for nine years, I think. Um, and I thought, okay, she must have every customer in the town. I'm going to have to go to another nearby town. But she just said, no, deliver, deliver to all the houses. My customers, if they want to order from you, they will. Mostly they'll probably still order from Sue, this is what she said, because obviously they're loyal to her. But all the houses in between that hadn't ordered from Sue when she'd first delivered years and years ago, that's where all my customers came from. So... If you come across another catalogue, don't worry about it. Chances are it's somebody who's just delivering to their regular customers um, and you will pick up your customers in between. But obviously if you see somebody else's catalogue, just leave it there. It's not your property. It belongs to them. You wouldn't want them to take yours, so don't take theirs. Um, keep records in your round book. So as you're going round, it's really important if a customer says, oh, no, I don't want one in future, thank you, to respect their wishes and obviously cross that one off. And if someone's thrown it away and says, oh, no, I don't want it, don't deliver it to me again, then, you know, again, you kind of, there's no point in wasting your time and theirs and losing catalogues by delivering to houses that have said they don't want it. But it is important to keep track of which houses you go to 
you might go out the front door and think, oh, this will be easy, I'll just deliver all down our street, I'll remember everything. But I guarantee, once you've been back the first time and sort of thought, oh, now some of those houses didn't put the catalogue out, and I can't remember if it was number 27 or number 29 that said they wanted to keep it for a little bit extra. So keep good records of when you're delivering, because this will be invaluable to you when you're going back collecting them. Um, as you go through people's gates, just close them behind you. Um, you know, be, just be polite. The normal kind of being polite, which is walking on paths. Don't walk across their gardens. Don't walk across their, their lawns. Um, but talk to everybody that you come across. Just be polite, cheerful. Hi, everybody. You know, I'm just dropping out a teeny catalogue through. Because um, what you're doing then is you're making yourself known to people in the area. And if you're cheerful and happy and, and polite, they're much more likely to order from you than if you're kind of just got your head down, put your hood up and run quickly and avoid talking to people. Okay, so that's delivering the catalogues. Once you've delivered them, you go back to collect them on the day that you said in your little reminder slip. Don't forget to take your round book with you so that you've got a track of, of all of the houses that you delivered to and then you can make a note of um, what happens when you go back to collect them. You also need to take little thank you slips so that if somebody does order from you, you can pop a little slip through saying thanks very much for your order and, and sorry I missed you slips. If you go to a house and there's, the catalogue's not there, um, you, you knock on the door first, but if there's nobody in, then you just need to pop a little reminder slip through and nine times out of ten what you'll find is in the next day or two it'll come appear on the doorstep because someone's come home from work or from being away. They see that your reminder slip and they put it out then. So, keeping track in your round book, for every house that you go to, make a note of, did you get the catalogue back? Did they order or not? Now, this is really important. When you're collecting the catalogues on the doorstep, pick it up and just have a quick look to see if there's anything on the order form. Um, it's quite tempting to just say, oh, I'll just sling them all in my trolley, get home, once I'm back home, I'll make a cup of tea and then go through them then to have a look. I guarantee if you do that, you will have an order form where somebody's written out you a nice order for £50 with loads of things and they've forgotten to write their name and address on the top. And you're thinking, oh my god, I've just picked up 250 catalogs. I have got no idea which house this came from. And that is heartbreaking when that happens. So, for five seconds, have a quick look. If someone's written an order form out and they haven't written their name or, or address on it, obviously you won't know their, their name or a contact number, but at least you can write 27 Johnson Street or whatever it is so you know which house to go back to with the order once you've got it. And make a note of whether they looked at the catalogue or not. As I said, it's, it's useful when you're deciding how long you're going to continue delivering catalogues to somebody. If they never look at all, then you probably sort of cut them off quite quickly. But if they're looking kind of every time or every other time, they might not have ordered from you, but they've obviously got an interest in the catalogue, so it's worth continuing with them. If there's no catalogue, all you do is knock on the door. I always just say, hi there, I just wanted to check if you've finished with the Clean Easy catalogue I dropped in a couple of days ago. And, and nine times out of ten, they just sort of say, oh, crikey, sorry, Chris, yeah, it is here. I just forgot to put it out this morning. And they'll give it to you. Sometimes they'll say, oh, sorry, I haven't had a chance to have a look at it yet. In that case, always, always, always say, oh, that's fine. Would you like to keep it for a day or two? I can pop round and pick it up tomorrow morning. Because what they're saying to you by saying, I haven't had time to look, is I had intended to, and I will do if you leave it with me. Now, sometimes they might say, oh, no, don't worry, I'll have a look at it next time. That's fine. But what I found was, um, if I just said to them, yeah, that's fine, have a look at it, take your time, I'll pick it up tomorrow, I would get a lot of orders from people like that. Because, firstly, they've kind of indicated they were interested. And secondly, because you kind of allowed them to keep the catalogue a bit longer. They appreciate that you're having to go back for it the next day, so they're putting you out to go back for it, and you will often find you get orders from people who say that. If there's nobody in, as I say, just pop a sorry I missed you slip through there, go back the next day. If you go back the next day to get pick up your stragglers and it's, there's still nobody there and it's still out, pop another reminder slip through. You know, they could be away for two or three days, and when they come back, you want it to be really obvious that you'd like the catalogue back, because you paid for them. So it's, you know, it's worth your while trying to get them back. And as I say, when you go back to the stragglers, you will often find a lot of them, when you put the missed you slip through, they're out there waiting for you the next day. 
but go back the next day, the day after. It might take you three or four times to go back, and then maybe go back once more a week later. Because as I said, especially kind of this time of the year and as the weather's improving, if people have gone away on holiday, if you put a reminder slip through saying, or a, a, a catalogue through saying, please put it out on Monday, let's suppose they're away for a few days, they come back on a Friday, something like that, they'll probably think it's just been put through the letterbox and they'll put it out the following Monday. So it's worth going back one week later just to kind of pick up any final stragglers. Okay. I'm just going to briefly go over the Facebook selling. As I said earlier, I'm not going to go through this in any detail because those, those videos on that Sell on FB website go into it in far more detail and I don't want to duplicate all of that. But basically, what you need to be doing is joining 30 to 60 local Facebook groups. You need to create your own group so that you're, you're attracting people to join your group. And your group is like your, your personal shop. And you post products in your own group. And, and before you start off, put in at least 10 or so products in there so that people who join your group don't see it, just a big empty shop. Um, and I recommend putting things in from both catalogues. Um, you can kind of choose. I would say speak to your sponsor. If you've got a sponsor who's active in Facebook selling, they'll kind of tell you what things are selling really, really well. But then in every day, every day, if you can, um, in each group that you're in, so the 30 to 60 local groups, Post one or two new products, bump one or two of the ones that you've posted recently, um, and also include an invitation to join your group. So on every item that I post, I say, you know, whatever it is, I was promoting the Grow Tunnel just recently, and put the price on, say, collect from Ringwood, which is where I live, and I say, just to, to, uh, to view all of our bargains and special offers, uh, please feel free to join our group, and then a link to your new, new group that you've created. And every day I get people joining the group, um, and once they're in your group, obviously they've got a huge range of things that they can see by browsing through it. Whereas obviously in the local groups, there's your stuff, but there's lots and lots of other stuff that can distract them as well. Um, and when they're in your group, you can build a relationship with them. I have a fantastic example of this. Um, when I first started putting things in my group, one of the first things that I promoted that sold really well was the the, the baby the printed cushion covers with baby details on, so you can get the baby's name, date of birth, and um, name, date of birth, and weight. And I had a customer who uh, she was actually a catalog customer, but she was on Facebook as well, and she had twins. I knew she had twins. And she sent me some details through saying, oh, uh, Chris, can you uh, order me a couple of cushion covers, please, for the twins, uh, Oscar and Ellie, I think they were called. Um, and I said, yeah, no problem at all. Just send me the names, the birth dates and, and everything on there. She sent the details through. And obviously the names are on there, their, their weights and so on. But I noticed that the, the date on one didn't match the birth date on the other. So I thought, oh, she obviously made, made a typing mistake. Um, so I went back to her Libby. She was called and I said, oh, Libby, I'm not sure if you've got these dates right because they've got different dates. And she said, actually, that's right, because they were born either side at midnight. One was before midnight, one was just after midnight. And I thought, what a fantastic story these twins are going to have when they grow up to say, my twin sister's got a different birthday to me. And I kind of asked, I said, Libby, are you happy for me to just explain that story within the group? So I put the little photo up of the twins and their cushion covers. And I got such a lot of feedback, and it was, it was almost like a little kind of viral photograph within my own group with people saying what a great story that was. So building little relationships with your customers is fantastic within your group because it's, it, it just creates a, a rapport and people trust you because they can see other customers trust you with, you know, with this kind of information. So, so that's, that's any little stories like that that you've got, just put little comments in your groups about that. Okay, so you put your catalogues out, collected them back in again, you've done some Facebook selling, it's time to place your first order. So this is the website where you go to place that first order. And um, Hopefully you'll remember that password that you had to create when you signed up. Um, if you didn't, don't worry, it's not the end of the world, you can reset it. Um, I'm not going to go through it in detail, your sponsor will help you with this, but a couple of it kind of key points. As you're putting your orders in, uh, it's useful to remember that you don't have to kind of finish the whole order and send it off before you log off. If you kind of only have time to do half of it or you get interrupted 
or you're thinking, oh, I've got a customer who's promised to put an order through my litter box, you know, tomorrow morning, then you can just put in as much of it as you've got so far. When you log off, it will remember all of the details that you've entered. And so you just go in the next day and add anything else you want to add to it before you send it off. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, the cut-off time for placing an order for getting it delivered to you in two working days is quarter past three. I normally say aim for three o'clock because it'll obviously give you a little bit of leeway if, if the system's running a bit slow or anything like that, or it takes you a bit longer to put your order in. What I mean by that is if you place an order, let's say, on Monday at three o'clock, it will get delivered to you on Wednesday. Um, slightly different if you're in Ireland, but, but for the majority of us, I think uh, Belfast, Jonathan's in Belfast, you, the delivery cut-off is actually later. You can put in an order at 9pm and still get it delivered to you a couple of days later. Whereas in the Republic of Ireland and in the Isle of Wight, I know Jane there is from the Isle of Wight, you have to allow an extra day. But generally, place an order by 3 o'clock on a Monday, it will get delivered to you on the Wednesday. If you place it at, say, 4 o'clock on the Monday, it will come to you on the Thursday. So bear that in mind if you're planning when you want to get it delivered, if you're saying to your customers when you're hoping to deliver to them, and that, that can make a, a big difference. Okay, so you've placed your order. A couple of days later, your goods arrive. Hopefully in lots of boxes and blue bags and things like that. What do you do? So basically, it's, it's all fairly simple, and you'll soon get into this routine. You unpack all of your boxes. Um, and then you sort them into your customer's order. So obviously in those boxes, you're going to have one of these and one of these for Mrs. Johnson, uh, one of these and two of those for Graham and whatever else it might be. I always put each thing into a separate carrier bag and then the blue receipt, the blue order form that the customer wrote on, I stapled that to the carrier so that basically I then have lots of carriers in my kind of in, in a box, if you like, and I put them in my car and then it's easy for me to see which order is for which customer because their order form is stapled to that carrier. I just use the empty boxes to, to hold them all. And then I, as I'm driving around, I use the pink receipts. Now, actually, the pink receipts are supposed to be for the customer. The customer is supposed to, when they've written the order form out, tear their pink copy off to keep it. But 95% of more of my customers leave me with both of them. So I just use the pink receipts as if you like my checklist as I'm driving around. But obviously there's different ways of doing it. When you're delivering the orders, um, what you'll find is Facebook buyers will often collect from you. You can offer them to collect or you can say you'll deliver to them. Obviously if they're local, that's great. And um, if I'm delivering to my catalog orders or to Facebook uh, uh, buyers that I've said I'll deliver to, I always try to call them first. Just to say, hi it's Chris, I've got your clean easy order, is it okay to bring it round? And, and I've had lots and lots of my customers say they really appreciate that little bit of customer service because it means you know they've got a couple of minutes to get their purse ready if they want if they're going to come and pay for it on the door with you and um, or if they're out apart from anything else it saves you a journey going there only to find they're not there um, and also if they're kind of in the middle of a meal or they've got family round they might just sort of say oh Chris I'm really sorry is it possible for you to deliver it in the morning instead. And that just, you know, a, a small phone call takes me sort of 15, 20 seconds to make it. And my customers, as I've said, I, I often ask my customers for feedback if there's anything I can do to improve it. Um, and, oh, excuse me. Um, and um, I, I kind of then found that a lot of people just sort of said, that no, Chris, one of the things that we really like about it is just that little phone call. So that's a really important thing, but really simple to do. Um, most of your customers will pay by cash or check and um, I would say if it's a Facebook customer who's collecting from you then I wouldn't take a check from them because you do, kind of don't really unless it's somebody you already know outside of Facebook you don't know them you might find it really difficult to track them down if a check bounces or anything however I'm quite happy to accept checks from my customers if I've delivered it to them because I kind of know where they live um, and um, to be honest, 95% of my customers prefer to pay by cash. Uh, they can also pay by card. Normally, and there's two or three different ways of doing it. Normally, I just ring the, there's a telephone uh, card payment line. Um, I just ring them up on my mobile phone by the, um, when I'm at the door, hand the phone to the customer, and the customer can then read out the card details to the, um, to the help desk there. 
And um, when they're making a check out, some people will say, "Oh, who should oh, excuse me?" will say, "Who shall I make the check to?" And you can either get it made to Clean Easy or to you. And it, it doesn't really matter hugely. If you make it made payable to you, then obviously you can pay it all into your bank account and then just pay Clean Easy what you owe once everything's gone in there. If they make it to Clean Easy, then you have to pay it into a branch of the NatWest with a paying in slip. Um, and I think, to be honest, I haven't had it happen to me before. But if they make it payable to Clean Easy and then it bounces, then there's a charge for Clean Easy to deal with the bounce check. So I've got a couple of customers who always just pre-write it out and always make it to Clean Easy, and I've never had any, never had any problems with it. But if in doubt, make it payable to you because then if it bounces, you know where they live. And I find 90% of the time, if somebody's checks bounce, I just ring them up and they're just really apologetic and they say, "Oh, Chris, please just come around and I'll give you the cash. That's not a problem." When you hand over the goods to your customers, I always just highlight the blue order form where you've got your details your, of, of you, just saying, um, oh, hi, Mr. Johnson, thanks so much for your order. My details are all on your, your receipt there, and point to it. And if you've got any problems at all, I'm really happy just to give you a refund or to replace it. Just give me a call any time. So they, they've kind of got your details, and that's just all part of building up that trust with your customers. Whew. Where are we? Gosh, right. I'll make that nearly 20 to 9, so I've been waffling on a little bit there. A um, couple of quick questions just to make sure everybody's kind of um, been awake. I'll see if any of you have anyway. Um, okay, from what I said at the beginning, can you remember how many weeks did I say before you would deliver a catalogue back to the same house as these? Abubakar thinks four, Katrina four to six, Gillian says four, Marie four, yep. Yeah. Guys, you've all been wide awake. Really pleased to see that. That's four. Um, if you're doing Facebook selling, how many local groups should you aim to join? I'm going to call 30 to 60. Oh, you guys are so good. Gillian, 30 to 60. You know, Dave Trowell, 60. Yep, 30, 30. Yep, excellent. <laughs> Lee Trowell, 82. Okay. Lee's just, just um, rubbing it in a little bit there. Obviously, lots of Facebook um, groups around Kent there. Um, yeah, normally we say 30 to 60, so if you're doing 82, that's absolutely fine. Um, in your first 30 days, how much in order should you target? Yeah, £600. Sean says 93, I think Sean's on the old question there. £600 between a year at least, I think that's an important point. Obviously you don't stop when you get to 600 You can have as many free catalogues as you want in your first 30 days. Just keep putting those... Um, orders in, £150 each time you put an order in gets you another 50 catalogues. Yeah, so good. If you can get over £600, that's brilliant. And you'll get, as I say, lots of free catalogues there. So, quick question to people. <laughs> that's okay, Gillian. I'm so pleased to find somebody in their first week who joined the webinar because uh, this is the best time to learn. Uh, how many catalogues a week are you planning to deliver? So especially for new starters, that is. Obviously, you guys who are already been in the business for a while, who have been on, who are on a customer base, might be doing this. Yep, 200, 250, 250. Yeah, that's brilliant. Well done, guys. I mean, I always say if you can do more, get your catalog. If you're doing this full time and you can get your catalogues out twice a week, that's brilliant. Because obviously, you've got twice as much chance of getting enough orders for your, your free delivery and everything. It just benefits. You, you make so much um, more money by doing that for all sorts of reasons. Okay, what have we covered? Well, basically, that was everything I said I was going to go through. Getting started as soon as possible. Don't kind of spend t your first two or three weeks learning how to do things. The quicker you get the catalogs out, the better. You only have your first 30 days in your first 30 days. And if you spend 15 days training then you've only got 15 days to get your 30 day bonus. And we went over getting your catalogs ready, planning, you know, making sure you're disciplined in terms of your time, being self-employed, fantastic, but you need to be disciplined, and how to deliver catalogs, how to collect them, a bit about Facebook selling, but please go to that sell on fb.co.uk, and how to place an order, what to do when you receive the goods and how to deliver them. So hopefully that all made sense, everybody. Um, it was sorry, I felt like I was going through it really, really quickly, but I am conscious of the time. It was kind of 40 minutes there. I went through 
and um, next week we'll be covering your first four weeks I'll ex expand on that a little bit um, next week um, as I said these are all being recorded so I'm just going to record turn off the recording now